Welcome back YouTubers to my channel. I've been every day life of my SB. If you're new to my channel, I love you all. I'm SB. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness and sharing my love stories with Sturgis Syndrome and the like, along with tips and advice along the way, be it your general health versus your mental health and just anything in between by just, you know, sharing my life experiences while you're journeying with me with Sturgis Syndrome and the like. So as people to my attention and said before that while I'm missing an action, then I'm going to try and bring out as many different topics to educate you all, motivate you all and whatever other means of reasoning behind to why you guys are here today on my channel. And hopefully in saying this, that you've learned something along the way while I'm educating you or what have you, and that you are liking me. So smash the like if you are, or just even feel free to comment below, because as I said, feedback is important. So I'm hoping in regards to today's topic, even though this is an updated version to what I've researched recently of all about cystic fibrosis, and also in saying this as a disclaimer, as always, while I've been doing my research, I'm no medical doctor, so I'm just your normal everyday Joe blog. So if you see any warning signs and symptoms in regards to what I'm sharing with you all in the past or present videos, seek professional help for yourself or your loved one, or seek, seek an opinion for yourself or your loved one, because I don't forever condone self-harm. And another disclaimer out there also, while I've been doing my research, some of the research is limited here in New Zealand, so I'm going to be based on my research through some other sites that are American based versus UK based, Aussie based or wherever it may be in other form of countries that has helped me and based on my research and hopefully in saying this I'll link some of these papers I have researched in the description below so that you can maybe read to your heart's content or whatever it may be. So let's begin this before we run out of time. So first question is, as we know basically cystic Fibrosis is an uncommon genetic disorder basically that causes persistent lung infections and progressively limits the ability for people with CF the ability to breathe. But beyond this definition, this can affect many other parts of the body systems that is around it of ours basically. Some of us will take for granted that we can breathe, we can eat, we can do whatever, but on the other hand, on the side for people with CF, it's a different kettle of fish. But just as a key reminder though to all of us that with people with CF it will look differently for each patient that has this. There are so many mutations of CF however around like many probably genetic hereditary disorders and every CF patient will like to be called something different besides maybe just see patient with CF or whatever but pays to ask them what they would like to be called. Some would like to be on the download just to be you know Call something else. CF is an invisible illness that is usually where you can see what is going on on the outside, but sometimes you can't always see what's going on in the inside of people with CF or any other people with invisible disabilities or conditions, regardless what it may be. And for them, it's a constant everyday struggle for them to maybe breathe, to eat, or what have you, due to, as I said before, with their bodily functions, just, you know, tends to developmental change of it all and saying this I'll be hoping to show some diagrams to follow along so that you can see where I'm coming from to get to grips and understanding of this condition just to obviously give you a bit of lowdown as well so it, in this it probably affects the respiratory and digestive systems the result is the build up of the thick mucus that builds up blocks up the ducts and airways that is where there will be a lot of bacterial growth inside this respiratory system because obviously that's where the bacteria likes to colonize and grow and start to you know to form different bacteria for different things. As this is an everyday battle for people with CF to fight off these bacterial infections every day as we know. It's also the reason people with cystic fibrosis or CF I'm going to call for short if need be basically have salty perspiration. It can also affect how the pancreas works. Cystic fibrosis or CF is a hereditary disease that affects the lungs and digestive system as I said before. The body pull cue is to produce thick and sticky mucus that can clog the lungs and obstruct the pancreas. Pancreas obviously deals with an insulin for blood glucose. The pancreas is really two glands that are ultimately mixed together into one organ. The bulk of the pancreas is composed of extracranial.
cells, which is obviously the cells from the outside of the body that produces the enzymes to help with the digestion of food. These exocrine cells release their enzymes into a series of progressively larger tubes called the ducts that eventually joins together to form the main pancreatic duct. The main pancreatic duct then runs the length of the pancreas and drains the fluid produced by the exocrine cells into the duodenum, which is the first part of the small bowel. The second functional component of the pancreas, however, is that endocrine pancreas. The endocrine is composed of small islands of cells called the islets of Langerhorn's. These endocrine cells, however, doesn't release their secretions into the pancreatic juices, or ducts, shall I say. Instead, they will release the hormones, <clears throat> such as your insulin and glucagon, or glucagon, I should say, into the bloodstream. And these hormones, in turn, will help to control blood sugar levels, which is your glucose. CF can be life-threatening, and people with the condition tend to have a shorter than normal lifespan. There's no cure for CF, however, like many kind of everyday conditions but good nutrition and taking the steps to thin the mucus and improve mucus expression may help. In the acidic cells of the exocrine outward cells of the pancreas however that purchases and transport enzymes that are passed into the duodenum where they assist in the digestion of food. The other lungs are the endocrine cells of the pancreas that produce and secrete hormones such as your insulin and glucagon into the blood stream. So the pancreatic hormones, insulin and glucagon will work together to maintain the proper levels of sugar in the blood. Blood sugar is used with, by the body for energy. The pancreatic hormones, insulin and glucagon obviously, but for CF pancreas obviously this doesn't make the enzymes that we do have. So therefore for people with CF they have to take pancreatic enzymes pills with everything that they eat so it can help them with their everyday needs. Obviously, in saying this, as I said before, being it a genetic disease that mainly affects the lungs and digestive system, it can then may result to fatal complications such as liver disease and diabetes, which I'll share more about the cystic fibrosis related diabetes in the next uptake if you want to hear more about what I'm sharing here to continue on this series. <coughs> This, the defective gene responsible for CF leads to the creation of thicker, stickier mucus than usual. This mucus is difficult to cough up of the lungs. This can make breathing difficult, however, that will lead to severe lung infections. The mucus also interferes with pancreatic function by preventing enzymes from properly breaking down the food. Digestive problems results, potentially leading to malnutrition. This thickening of the mucus can also cause male infertility by blocking the vas deferens and the tube that carries the sperm from the testes to the urethra. And same again, it can be life threatening for females with CF because obviously, you know, of, of the malnutrition underneath them. CF is serious with potential life threatening consequences. The most common cause of death in people with CF is respiratory failure. For the symptoms basically the for this often include chronic cough lung infections and shortness of breath. Children with cystic fibrosis may also have trouble gaining weight and obviously have trouble in growing, so stunt in growth. The most common symptoms of CF are as follows. Salty tasting skin, persistent coughing, shortness of breath, wheezing, poor weight gain in spot of excess amount of appetite, greasy bulky stills, nasal, nasal polyps or small fleshy growth found in the nose. CF's obstruction of the lungs can increase the risk of lung infections such as bronchitis and pneumonia. It, so it creates optimal conditions, as I said, for the growth of pathogens and mucus alike. Obstruction in the pancreas can also lead to malnutrition and poor growth that then will be associated with an increased risk of diabetes and osteoporosis. Treatment revolves around keeping the EY clear and maintaining adequate nutrition. Health problems can be managed, but there's no cure for this progressive illness. There's currently no cure for CF. Treatment can be managed by the limbs of the disease, however, it can improve the quality of life. Symptoms can be varied and treatment plans will be individualized for each patient. 
So for one of the treatments is LA clearance, different which types more in more detail in the next video also. So if you want to hear more of that, smash the like or comment below that you would like to, or just keep an eye on it when I do bring it out. It's crucial for people to have to get rid of mucus from their lungs to allow clear breathing and minimise the lung infections that it involves. Airway clearance techniques can help people to have to loosen and get rid of mucus from their lungs. In this diagram that is shown, the effects in the mucociliary clearance of the CF airway creates opportunities for microbial colonization and growth. The human respiratory system contains different anatomical anatomical regions, including the paranasal sinuses, the tracheobronchial region, the conductive zone, and the alveolar region, the respiratory zone. A mucous layer is produced by the goblet cells and submucosal glands in the conductive zone and sinuses. In individuals without CF though, however, the cilia of the epithelial cells in the upper airway efficiently removes the particles or microbial cells that are efficiently trapped in thin flu fluidic mucus, a process termed mucociliary clearance. In patients with CF, however, on the other hand, the cilia can't clear the vicious and dehydrated mucus layer efficiently, which results in colonization by bacteria such as pseudonomias, aerogenism. The immune response is mutated, however, by polymorphic leukocytes, polymorphonuclear leukocytes, and antibodies lead to scarring of lung tissue and impairment of lung function. The airway mucus is a major reservoir for P. Erogen growth and other niches. An example of ACT, which is basically airway clearance therapy, which I'm going to shorten it down to so you can understand me, would be postural drainers and percussion. A therapist claps the patient's chest and back while they sit, stand, or lie in a position that should help to free up the mucus. Another treatment they could do is the vestus. which consists of an inflatable vest connected by tube to an air pulse generator. The generator then will rapidly inflate and deflate the vest, compressing and releasing the chest wall. This technology is called high-frequency chest wall oscillation. The rapid chest movement mimics many coughs that dis is dislodged and thins out the mucus, moving it along to the central airways. The vest therapy treats all lobes of the lung simultaneously and is technique independent. It can be beneficial to patients across the continuum of care, including acute and post-acute facilities as well as in the home. Another treatment that you could do is some gentle exercise, such as a form of yoga, maybe um, jumping on the trampoline, or just about anything that you can think of that may help clear up the nasties out of your airways. And how medication is effective at reaching the airways and is commonly used. The medication can be given as an aerosol or as a metered dose inhaler. These medications can thin mucus, kill bacteria and mobilize the mucus to improve airway clearance. It's super important to be really diligent in how about they go about clearing the you know, airways or doing the airway clearance therapies because unfortunately patients with CF can't pause one minute of the day for the lung infections or mucus buildup build up, as whatever happens they need to accept it or not when this happens because every day is different. Just need to be prepared every single day to what is to come for them. What more like may look like more than an allo therapy to some patients will again vary to how long they should do it for for these treatment therapies that is taken into place. Antibiotics are such an important part of regular care. They can be taken orally, intravenously or through inhalation. Other drugs such as ibuprofen and azithromycin can have been found to pres preserve and improve lung infection and are now considered to be part of the standard therapy for people with CF. People with CF, however, can also reduce their risk of lung infection by taking the following steps. Washing hands frequently. One. Two, getting a flu shot every year. Three, not smoking and avoiding secondhand smoke if possible. Four, avoiding unnecessary contact with people who have colds or other contagious illnesses. Five, so those are the top four. Other forms of treatment to look into. There are other alternative methods of managing CF that doesn't involve the airways, however, as I said before, it affects not just the rest of the tree, but other forms of the body system. Implemented devices can allow long-term access to the bloodstream to, for the frequent and regular administration of drugs. They can make management 
of a chronic condition like CF more efficient and less intrusive. Some patients may likely to have some feeding tubes versus, you know, nasogastro feeding tubes and some other tubes to help them to go about it also. CF transmembrane conductance regulator modulators are the newer medications that target the faulty CF causing gene. They allow for the proper flow of salt and flows on the surface of the lungs, thinning the mu thick mucus that people with CF usually has built up in their lungs over time. Two CFTR modulator brands are currently being approved by the Food and Drug Administration. These are Kalidico and or can be. They are prescribed for children with 10 different mutations of the CF causing gene. Nutritional symptoms. As CF can affect digestive system, functions and nutrition absorption. However, people CF should discuss their diet with the doctor and nutritionist specialist or dietitian that will then help them make the management of digestive systems and find proper treatments that will work for them. A different kind of diet or additional supplements such as pancreatic enzyme supplements, salt or vitamins may be needed to balance out the absorption of the nutrients that is lost. It is, however, for people with CF can lead to impaired growth as shared before. A high calorie, high fat diet is essential for normal growth and development in children with CF. It can help adults to maintain optimal health as well. Good nutrition is vital as individuals with CF needs to maintain a robust defense against an increased risk of lung infection. Of CF the is an inherited condition. For someone to have CF, they need to inherit the defective gene from both of their parents. The defective gene contains codes for producing a protein that controls the flow of salt and water outside these organs, including the lungs and pancreas. In CF, the balance of salt is disturbed, leading to too little salt and water outside of the cells and production of the thicker than normal mucus. People with only one copy of the defective gene are called carriers. They don't have the condition or its symptoms. To have the disease, both parents, as I said, must be carried carriers. If two carriers have a child, there is a 25 to 50% or one in four chance the child will have CF. 50% or one in two chance the child will be a carrier but will not have CF. 25% or one in four chance the child will not be the carrier and will not have CF. Over to diagnosis. When are you likely to be a known nurse? In the United Since 2010, it's mandatory for all doctors in the United States to screen new bills for a CF. The test involves collecting a blood sample from a heel prick. A positive test can be followed with a sweat test to measure the amount of salt in the sweat, which can aim to help secure the diagnosis of CF. In 2014, more than 64% of people diagnosed with CF were diagnosed through newborn screen. A screen CF for CF by testing blood sample ultrasound samples, as mentioned. This can indicate that a baby might have a health condition and require further investigation. CF is usually diagnosed through a sweat test. Sweat is collected and the amount of chloride or component salt in the sweat is then measured. A high level of chloride is an indication of CF. Genetic tests, however, can also be carried out by analysing check cells or a blood sample. These tests are usually used or mainly used to find out if the person is the CF gene carrier. There are over 1,700 known mutations of the CF gene. As a result, most genetic tests for the condition only screen for the most genetic mutations. Maybe who's at risk for CF can affect people of any ethnicity in any region in the world. The only known risk for factors are the race and genetics. Among Caucasians is the most common autosomal recessive disorder. Autosomal recessive, recessive, recessive genetic inherent patterns must mean that both parents need to be at least the carriers of the gene. A child will only develop the disorder if they inherit the gene from both parents. There's no risk only if both parents carry this defective gene. When they're on about, what does it mean to live with CF? People with CF should avoid being very close to others who have it. But that doesn't mean that with people that are healthy, they're not contagious at all. They're just trying to fight out their lungs with the you know, condition. That's because each person has different types of bacteria in their lungs if you were sick and you have got the condition. Bacteria is that not harmful to one person with CF, but it can be quite dangerous to another. High fat, high calorie, high salt nutrition support. Lots of children with cystic fibrosis can meet the additional in energy requirements by modifying or fortifying their normal family meals. Add extra butter or mascarpone to cream, mashed potatoes and pasta, pop a handful of, of grated cheese on top of meals, mix a teaspoon of vegetable or olive oil into the vegetables, put a large amount of butter on toast, wait for it to melt, then add another layer. Pull a large amount of butter 
I've already said that. Use full dairy products, blue pot milk, non dairy yogurts, snack between meals but not too close to meals before bedtime, peanut butter on toast, crisps and dips, flapjacks, etc. Have a pudding with each meal as well, including pastry, crumbles, sponge puddings, etc. Sometimes the dietitian may suggest the child will see if should have a high calorie drink as well between the meals in order to boost their calorie intake. Some of the supplement drinks come on one prescription from the GP, or you can make your try to be creative and make your own. So therefore a suggestion here is five ripe strawberries, half of a banana, three teaspoons of chocolate milkshake flavouring, such as mess quick or crush sufficient insufficient, you will be prescribed some enzymes to replace those that you can't make yourself. These enzymes contain lipase to digest the flavor, amylase to digest carbohydrate, and protease to digest the proteins. These enzymes are coated in a protective letter that look like little bees. This is so they are, don't get na natured by the stomach acid. It will be changed to yogurt until they are old enough to learn to swallow the enzyme. Mal Malnutrient absorption. If you get, forget to take your enzymes, your dose isn't quite right for you. You may notice some of the following symptoms. One, tummy aches, pain, bloating and one. Two, pale, floating stool, and which quite often will not flush away. Three, oil, orangey present in the water in the toilet after a bowl movement. Four, needing to go to the toilet to open your bowels a lot more, more than two or three times a day. Five, not gaining as much as weight as expected. Again, talk to your dietitian and let them basically explain more. People see if will need more salt in their diet, especially in hot weather, or if they're doing lots of exercise that makes them perspire a lot. If we have a very warm summer here today, you're planning a hot holiday abroad or what have you, then talk to your child's doctor or just your doctor in general so they can be prescribed a salt supplement. As a general, it's quite a good idea to get into the habit of adding some extra salt to your child's meals or even to your own meals. Do this at the dinner table. Here's some ideas. Use Salted butter on toast and vegetables, mama or blueberry, soups and stock cubes and cooking, crisp and cheese drawers as snacks, and salts at the table, but don't get too much. Fluids. Most children should try and dr to drink up to six to eight cups a day. It's important to ch for children with CF to stay hydrated, especially in hot weather. This can help to loosen the secretions while doing their physiotherapy. Well, let's quickly really all about yeah. CF, the updated vision, smash the light vision, comment below. Feel free to share these videos around and also feel free to actually, you know, have a look into hopefully these information that I'm about to share with you. And also, don't forget if you haven't done so and you would like to, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell while you're down there. Also, feel free to actually follow me on my social media sites because as I said, I'm hoping to keep you all posted through my SB answers, either through Facebook or Twitter, what's going down if need be, because as we know, communication is important. So, without further ado, guys, thanks for your support, thanks for watching, do what you love, love what you do. Until next time, SB signing out, and I'll see you all again soon. Ciao for now.